Hello friends, this video on transport in plants part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have ended our discussion on xylem transport. Now we will talk about phloem transport. Now, as I have mentioned before, phloem are those con conducting tissues which help to transport the food prepared in a plant from leaves to different parts of the plant. The food which is prepared in a plant is by the process of photosynthesis. And what is that food? That food is in the form of sugar, that is glucose. So before we start about talk about the transport uh, mechanism of phloem, let us quickly have a recap on the structure of phloem. Now, unlike xylem, most of the phloem cells are living except phloem fibers. So, let us see what are the different elements which together make up the phloem. We have sieve tubes which are tubular structures. You can see here, these sieve tubes are the tubular structure which actually help in conduction. So, these are tubular cells with perforated walls. Toward on both the ends, they have sieve-like structures called sieve plates. So this side also and this side as well. So both, both ends will have walls with perforations called sieve plates and otherwise it will be a tube like structure. Companion cells which will be present in uh, at neighboring to the sieve tubes. So these are the companion cells. So they, are, they regulate the metabolic activities of the sieve tube elements. Next is phloem parenchyma. These are the normal parenchyma cells which help in storage of food. So that is phloem parenchyma. So they support the sieve tubes and also store compounds like starch. So they help, they basically help in storage. And finally the phloem fibers which provide mechanical strength and they are dead cells and they just provide the mechanical support and strength. So here also if you see like how in case of xylem you had xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers. Similarly here you have phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. For conduction in xylem, you had tracheids and vessels and here for conduction, you have the sieve tubes and the companion cells to um, regulate their metabolic activities. So now we will see how exactly this transport take place. So how does phloem transport? The most interesting question here. Now, when we talk about the transport, it actually follows a mechanism called the pressure flow mechanism or a mechanism where the substances are transported from source to shit to sink. In case of xylem, the source of water was soil. So water always needed to be transported in one direction that is the upward direction. But here that is not the case. Leaves are present at all levels. So from leaves, you need to transport the food downwards to the roots and you also need to transport it to the upper branches which are present. So you need to transport it in both the direction, upward, downward, as well as laterally. So in all directions, you need to transport. So phloem transport sugars by a mechanism called pressure flow hypothesis. What is pressure flow hypothesis? This says that the sugar will flow in a direction from high pressure towards a region of low pressure. So that is called a pressure flow hypothesis. We will talk about it in detail. So before we talk about it, we should understand that the transport will always take place from source to sink. What is a source? Source is that region where the food is synthesized. So in this case, source are the leaves. So source synthesizes food. So here leaves synthesizes food by the process of photosynthesis. So leaves are the source. When you talk about sink, sink are all those regions which utilizes the food or which stores the food, which needs that food to for their own survival. So when you talk about a sink, roots are the sink, uh, the branches are sink, stems are sink, uh, the flowers, fruits, they are all sink. So here, the food needs to be transported from source to the sink. This is a bidirectional transport as I mentioned before also because here you need to transport it both below as well as above because leaves are present everywhere and you might have a branch above this as well. So the food needs to be transported in all directions. So what is that food exactly which we are talking about here that is called sap 
and sap is nothing but sucrose and water now by the process of photosynthesis the food which is prepared that is glucose but that glucose being a monosaccharide is then converted into a disaccharide that is sucrose and sucrose when mixed with water forms the sap and this sap is basically transported by phloem to different parts of the plant so the sap contains the sucrose and sucrose is nothing but made up of glucose so that is how glucose reaches the different parts of the plants so now let us try to understand the pressure flow hypothesis what happens in a pressure flow hypothesis this is also known as mass flow hypothesis because here also the movement of the uh, particles occur in mass that is why it is called mass flow hypothesis so now let us try to understand the concept of pressure flow hypothesis now we already know that we have a tube of xylem a xylem tube rather which carries water so now we also have a phloem tube which carries the sap now we have a source which is the leaf which are the leaves here which prepares the food by the process of photosynthesis and we have sink where to where we need to transport the food materials from now the first step is to transport the food from the source into the phloem now how does that happen that happens by active transport because the phloem already gets in too much of um, the food from there so whatever newly prepared food is there that is also actively transported into the phloem now once the sugar is actively transported into the phloem what happens the sugar concentration here increases now sugar concentration increases would mean the solute concentration will increase now once the solute concentration increases that means the water potential is decreasing so now here on the other hand in xylem there is too much of water so the water potential is high here the high water potential is high and here the water potential is low so what will happen water will start diffusing in from xylem to phloem so water will start to enter here so now you will also have water here so water will also start to enter enter here so now what do you have you have sugar plus water so you basically have a sugar solution now when so much of water start entering into this area pressure is created you all know right when more and more water start to enter inside a, a container it exerts pressure on the walls of the container so the similar thing happens a high pressure area is created in this region so as a result this sugar solution start to move downwards from the region of high concentration towards the region of lower concentration it is not about up or down i mean i'm just showing it like this but this tube is there even upward as well so when the sugar and the xylem enters like this it creates a high pressure here so this is also low pressure this is also low pressure so they can move in either ways so let us suppose it moves towards the lower it moves down the pressure gradient that is from region of higher pressure towards region of lower pressure now as it moves down towards the region of lower pressure wherever it finds a sink now this sink can be a root it can be a flower it can be a meristem apical meristem whatever it can be now as it keeps moving down whenever it finds a sink the sugar is actively transported into the sink so the sugar will actively go there so the food is transported to this area now what happens to the water as soon as the sugar moves out the solute concentration decreases here when the solute concentration decreases the water potential will increase so again water will move from high potential to low potential so what happens water moves back into the xylem so this is water again this was also water so this also moved by diffusion or osmosis here also this moved by diffusion or osmosis and what is this this is sugar again here also this was sugar and the sugar was actively transported even here also the sugar was actively transported to the sink 
and then this phenomenon keeps happening over and again and this is how the sugar is transported from the source to the sink now this sink can be multiple sinks here just to explain you i have uh, uh, given this uh, example of root but it can be anything else it can be a flower it can be a fruit it can be a branch it can be a apical meristem a lateral meristem because all of them need the food so it can be anything so that way is this entire pressure flow hypothesis continues and this is how phloem transports food to different parts of the body, to different parts of the plant. Now let us have a quick summary of whatever we have discussed in the pressure flow hypothesis. The first step is that sugar should be actively transported from the source to the phloem. So this is how the sugar enters the phloem tube. Now since the concentration of sugar is increasing, the water potential in the phloem tube will reduce. Therefore, the water will diffuse from xylem to phloem because water moves from high potential to low potential. Now, once water enters into the xylem tube, now you have sugar plus water, that is the sugar solution. Since so much of water entered into the phloem tube, it will create a high hydrostatic pressure. Because of this high pressure, the sugar water solution will start to flow down the pressure gradient. So sugar gets transported along the pressure gradient. Wherever it finds a sink, it is actively transported to the sink. Only sugar is actively transported to the sink and not the water. So what happens to the water? As the concentration of sugar decreases in the phloem tube, the water potential increases. So water diffuses back from phloem to xylem. So these steps together constitute the pressure flow hypothesis and they control how food has to be transported to different parts of the plant. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.